this was uh this was a very elaborate um elaborate setup you know they they were using um the names of of kucoin employees of former kucoin employees their twitters looked legit we you know they they spoofed the the kucoin.com email address the domain um i i don't even know how you do that um so it was um it was quite a ride you know we were we had several several team members in a in a group telegram chat with these guys um it was very detailed if, if i had to guess and speculate i would say that they were probably x if not x kucoin employees you know x exchange employees like they did this they did onboarding in the past um because they they knew the process so well wow now that's one hell of a statement so let's backtrack for a second. I'll help explain all the players that are involved right now inside this conflict. So first we have White Whale. Now White Whale is a project on Terra. They plan on launching, launching within the next couple of weeks. And what they're actually doing, they're simply bringing arbitrage opportunities to the masses. So if you want to participate in some arbitrage opportunity within DeFi, well, White Whale is going to help make that happen basically for anyone. You just come onto their platform, deposit some let's say some UST, and you can take part in some opportunities there. Now we have KuCoin. Most of you should know who KuCoin is. They are a relatively major centralized exchange, probably one of the top three, top four out there. So obviously we have two policies here. We have White Whale and we have KuCoin. So to begin, let's first look at the Twitter thread that kind of happened before all this was unveiled. So on December 29th, White Whale releases a tweet and they say regarding KuCoin, one, we're currently pursuing a KuCoin listing and the application process. Two, our listing has, yet, has not yet been approved and we do not know if or when it will be. And the third point, the whale token that has been announced on KuCoin as, be, well, as being listed on KuCoin is an ERC20 token and that is not us. Now, there was a tweet before this one that was already deleted by White Whale, and unfortunately, I do not have a screenshot. But basically, I remember the White Whale released a tweet basically saying that, hey, we've, we've got a list of KuCoin. You should be able to trade it there. And quickly, in about 30 minutes, maybe an hour, they kind of reneged on that tweet and said that basically they've deleted that since KuCoin is not holding up their side of the, of the agreement. And then came that tweet. Now, within hours, they followed up the response below saying, we apologize for the confusion. There is more to the story. However, it is still developing. We plan to give a full briefing at our regular community call, community update call on Friday. We'll just end that there. So that audio recording that you just heard was from that Twitter space. Now, before I give you my whole opinion on this matter, I just want to give you a few more details that they've shared. These next few slides are going to come from the Medium article that White Whale submitted over the next day or two. So as we look right here, we're going to be focusing on the parts that are highlighted. You're free to read the whole thing and just pause the video. So they say at first glance, their profile looked legitimate. They had a real KuCoin handle and website in their bio and organic looking tweet history. They said how they even received an email directly from listing at KuCoin.com. They also mentioned here that throughout the process, they received detailed discussions and planning between both teams. Multiple forms were filled out, KYC, contract signed, marketing graphics, kind of telling us that, listen, it was so elaborate that they really, you know, put on all these different charades. It was an organized and a coordinated team of people running a complex operation. And they also kind of mentioned how there was another whale token being listed on the same day on KuCoin that is not related to them, but it matched up the day that they themselves were supposed to get up there. And that created more confusion. The second part here, the only thing I highlighted was after further investigation, it became clear that these were not really KuCoin agents. They were scammers and we got rug. And this was after they submitted their tweet, kind of saying, hey, we're getting listed on KuCoin. KuCoin did not really say anything on their end. They were supposed to also send out a tweet affirming that, but they did not. That's kind of when they got the cue that something might be wrong. 
So damages, let's talk about the damages because that's what the thumbnail even states, right? So the damage was 2.5 million whale from the non-circulating circulating supply and 50,000 USDT from our team development funds. Well, how much is that? Well, I've decided to use 20 cents per whale as the price since whale has kind of stayed at 20 cents now for the past two weeks or so. It has traded a little higher than that, but I think 20 cents is a fair amount to go by. If we take 2,510,000 whale tokens against 20 cents, we would be looking at a total of $502,000 on top of the 50,000 USDT. So overall, overall, White Whale basically took a hit for just about $550,000. Now, what we can read below here, they did say that they themselves took their funds and they bought out 2.5 million whale tokens from the circling supply to essentially reduce the dilution that would occur when these scammers either had already sold their whale tokens or plan on selling their whale tokens. I'm not sure if there's been information as to whether or not they have done that. Uh, but this was obviously a good move by the whale team to kind of take that amount out of circulation, especially because, I mean, a lot of this fault obviously falls on them. Now, now, in this last screenshot that we're looking at, they do say we ask for the whale community to forgive us for this misstep. Now, before I criticize them, I'm willing to, to throw them a bone and say that the fact that they came out very quickly, when I say they, I mean the whale team, the fact that they came out very quickly, admitted to their mistake, the fact that they held a Twitter space conversation for about an hour, they released a detailed Medium post talking about what happened. The fact that they actually went out and purchased that amount of whale tokens that they got scammed by, they bought it out of the circulating supply. And most importantly, the fact that they themselves admitted that they made a mistake. All this looks great. And I commend them for being transparent. Because to me personally, on my YouTube channel, you've seen me criticize projects that are not being transparent. And the whale is being transparent in this case. They've done everything I would expect a good project to do when they mess up. Now, with that being said, making a mistake like this still speaks to the how competent the team is. Now, I get it. The scammers could have had a very elaborate scam going on. But throughout all these notes that I've read and audio I've listened to, not even once was it mentioned that, hey, we hopped on a phone call with them. Now, I get it. You know, in this day and age, not everyone wants to speak on a phone call. But if we're talking about a transaction that's half a million dollars and I mean, you know, KuCoin is a relatively reputable centralized exchange. I would think that a simple phone call would have been had, but not even something as small as that. Now, sure, maybe that due diligence of just having a phone call would not have gone somewhere. But maybe if you had a phone call with these scammers, there would have been something there that would have been off for you to be like, wait a minute, let's look at this all over again. So during the Twitter spaces, someone did ask Sebastian, the founder of White Whale, are you planning on listing on KuCoin anytime in the near future? And he said, yes, it's always been on the roadmap. But for those of you that are kind of looking to try to speculate on, on the price of whale based on the KuCoin listing, don't really do that because it's, it's not a full-on priority right now. So it's clear that, that White Whale never really planned on, on partnering up with KuCoin right now in the month of January or end of December, which is when this whole incident occurred. Obviously, when the scammers reached out, they must have offered them a deal that they just couldn't refuse. Um, it's hard to tell, without knowing the details of the, of the agreement, what KuCoin themselves would have been pocketing from this, or what specifically what they believed KuCoin would be pocketing from this, because obviously during the time of the signings and everything, they did think this was a legitimate KuCoin team. Now, we can say that that 50,000 USDT that was also sent over those whale tokens, that that would have been the payment to KuCoin for listing it onto their platform. Now, I would also guess that the real KuCoin team, they likely take much more than 50,000 USDT. And I'm sure that the team on White Whale was kind of aware of that. And they kind of said, listen, if we wait a few more months or six months, you know, right now they're giving us maybe a promotional rate 
In other instances, maybe we would have to pay a quarter of a million dollars to get listed on their platform. They're giving us a promo promotional offer for 50,000 USDT. Let's jump all over that, even though we're not at a place where we should kind of be getting listed at KuCoin. Much to the fact that they simply do not have a working product yet, at least nothing live, right? So I guess that's what, where, where I criticize them for, the fact that they kind of got a little too enthusiastic, right? They, they saw an opportunity, a bunch of scammers came through, gave them an offer that they simply couldn't refuse, I guess, and they just didn't do the right level of due diligence there. Now, whether or, now, now whether or not those were KuCoin employees, I guess ex-KuCoin employees, no one's ever going to know, those were Sebastian's words. And in terms of how elaborate it was, it's also hard to gauge. You know, Sebastian did say during the phone call that they seem to have been people that have, have they, they really know what the onboarding process looks like. I guess my only question is, is that are there people on Sebastian's team, on White Whale team that have gone through an onboarding process on other projects in the past and they've had a chance to kind of see exactly what it looks like? Because if they themselves do not have that experience, then... Possibly all they saw was a bunch of official looking documents to them that resembled that of a typical onboarding experience. And they say, yes, this is completely legitimate. So I, I'm not sure whether or not they have something to compare that to, or that was simply their perception based on all the documentation and questions that they had to go through during this process. So overall in this matter, again, I commend them for being transparent, but at the same time, I have to be critical over the fact that this is not something that should have happened to a project that has already raised like tens of millions of dollars. It still seems, it still seems that if an hour, two hours of due diligence was to be done on this matter, all of this could have just been avoided. Now, if you're still watching, feel free to hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And we're still gonna stay on the topic of white whale, but there was something else that came up during this phone call that is not related to the KuCoin mess, but it's something else that's kind of caught my interest. And I really wanna discuss it as well. So for that, we're gonna to listen to one more recording from Sebastian. Um, so due to some formula updates, our peg, our bot speed was improved significantly in the past week. Um, you know, up to this point, we're still getting front run quite a bit by faster bots, but we're looking forward to the next round of volatility to stress the performance of our bots at their current speed. Um, the bottom line is we're still not satisfied with the speed of our bots. However, we are making significant progress and we are getting there. We know where we need to get, um, and we're, we're making significant progress towards that. So from that recording, keep that in mind, right? They kind of mentioned the fact that they're still getting front run by other bots. Now, before I give you my full opinion on this, I want us to look at a few other uh, quotes from them that I got during the Twitter space. And I will also say that the vast majority of the questions in the Twitter space were actually regarding how effective their ARP bots currently are. So when someone kind of tried to kind of push in, ask like, are you still getting front run by the bots? we received a response that said, our problem is getting the transaction out of the node has a delay. We are currently decoding all the transactions that hit the mempool, even though we need to decode only the ones that we care about. Python being slow and not working well with concurrent processes, such as fetching and checking the states. When someone else came on and again asked about the efficiency of the bots, they said, the biggest thing is still optimizing data fetching and execution of trade. Now they've also mentioned during this call that the current bot is written in Python. We want to rewrite it in Go to make it quicker. But in the meantime, the Python bot will be used to trade the ARB. Now this is big because we also learned during this call that in about two or three weeks, the UST boat is being launched by White Whale. So officially you can hop on and take part in holding the pack for UST and hopefully make a yield from doing so. That's what everybody's looking forward to. But we're also learning the fact that the team is still struggling to create a bot that is competitive to other ARP bots out there. Now, when someone asked about what is the expected yield when you guys launch, here's the response. Really hard to say. Since our bots are still being developed and being optimized, they're getting faster and better quickly, but they're still in process. It is dependent on the volatility of the market. When market shakes, that is when trades are made and there is more yield. I want to curb expectations. When we roll out, the yield will be close to the anchor yield, maybe slightly higher. So in that quote, 
they're basically admitting that they're still struggling to be competitive against other bots, even though they're launching in one or two weeks. They're just waiting for one of their orders to go through right now. And once that happens, they get a green light. They do have a second audit, but I, I don't believe they're waiting for the second audit to clear. I think once the first order clears, they are going live. But again, the big issue is they're going live with a bot that is simply not competitive at the moment. So at this point, what I'm going to be expecting when they go live, well, for starters, let's first explain how they plan to handle this UST vault. So you deposit UST and they would use your UST to hold the peg of, uh, of UST. If your money is not being used to hold the peg, they will take your money, your UST, and they will deposit it into Anchor. And Anchor gives us a 19.5% yield. So at the very least, you should be making the Anchor yield, which is 19.5. Now, if there's opportunities to be made by ARBing, you can make a bit more yield there, right? Like that's the whole idea. But they said the yield will be close to the Anchor yield, maybe slightly higher. In my opinion, I mean, if the anchor yield is 19.5 right now, I wouldn't be surprised if the yield that you'd get through White Whale would probably be like 19.6, 19.7. Because the biggest thing, again, is the fact that they're not able to capture as much of the transactions as other people are when it comes to, when it comes to taking advantage of this arbitrage opportunity. When someone asked them, what is the strategy towards improving that? They said, it would be nice to have a node close to the validators. We are thinking about partnering up with validators and getting a private connection to the validator nodes, nodes so when we submit a transaction, we'd have a competitive advantage instead of relying on our speed. And that's smart. I mean, that's similar to you know people that build bots in the stock market, right? Big quant firms and everything. They want to get direct line to, to, the, to, the, to the stock market, right? get rent servers in the room. They want to be closer to where the action is occurring. They're saying, well, think about partnering up because that will give us an opportunity. That will give us a competitive advantage instead of relying on our speed. And well, they realize that they cannot rely on their speed because no matter what, their biggest issue is the latency. The fact that they cannot fetch the transactions in the mempool quick enough, they can't phrase them quick enough, and they can't send out their own transaction quick enough or better off quicker than what other people are doing. And they might be hitting a cap where like, listen, we can try to get quicker and quicker, but I still can't, we still can't see how we can get up to those speeds. So another way to go about it, instead of trying to compete on that level, let's try to do it through partnerships. Let's actually talk to the validators where people are actually staking all the Luna and where the transactions are actually going in. That's smart, but that is a partnership that you would think would have been done a while ago, tested out, made efficient, and then you go live and you offer it to the public, right? That, that, that's just my opinion on it. Because right now, in the two weeks, we're going to see White Whale come out. Now, again, I've been excited about this project. I think this is a really cool project. I think bringing arbitrage opportunities to the masses is a great way. And it's, it's a very attractive way to bring more, more, uh, more people over to Terra. But it needs to be done well. And right now, the way I'm seeing, the way it's being done, they're kind of putting the cart in front, in front of the horse. I think they kind of needed to take a step back, make sure they had a working product at first, right? That it's competitive, the fact that, hey, we may not capture 100% of all the opportunities out there when it comes to holding this pack. We capture a material amount. A material amount that if we get half a billion TVL locked in, it would still yield an additional, let's say, four, five, six percent on top of the anchor yield. But that's not the case. Instead, they're going live, and maybe, maybe for lucky, it would be a 0.1% increase on, on the anchor yield. Now, some of you might say, well, 0.1%, that's still better. Like, what, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Well, the increased risk. So I'm not saying gun ho 20-year-old per 20 year old person that would just always like forego any sort of risk and just go after every opportunity. I'm 30 years old now. And what this is the way I look at it, right? So if you have your money invested in Anchor, your UST in Anchor, you're getting that 19.5% yield. Now it's not risk free. You know that Anchor does have smart contract risk. Any DeFi project has that risk. It doesn't even matter how many times they've been audited because we have seen so many DeFi projects ultimately get exploited. 
We can only hope that Anchor never falls victim to that, but it's always on the table, which is why there's even insurance for it. So 19 and a half. Well, if you take your UST, well, if you, if you think about it and you say, well, I can deposit my UST into White Whale and at the very least I will get that anchor yield. Well, you're actually now risking your money through two different projects. So you not only have smart contract risk in anchor, you have smart contract risk in White Whale and in anchor. So you, you've increased the amount of risk that you have on a table and you've increased that risk for, let's say right now, when they launch maybe in a few weeks for a 0.1% increase. So you got to ask yourself, does that make sense? Should I increase my risk by that much to eke out that much more return? And that's what I'm asking myself. For some of you out there, it may not matter. You might have full on trust in everything. You may have full on trust in all the, all the auditors even though we've seen projects audited and we've seen them still get exploit, exploited. For me personally, it's a very tough sell for me to take a substantial sum of money and place it into white whale if the yield is barely above anchor. I'd rather reduce the amount of risk and just put it in anchor. That just seems like a much more practical decision. I do own about 4,000 whale tokens. I would love to make a video to pump my bag and tell you to buy as many whale tokens as you possibly can. I'd love to do that, but I'm not going to do that. I want to see whale succeed. It's a very interesting project. I just think they're rushing things at the matter. And I think the fact that they got scammed by a bunch of scammers kind of points to the idea that they're being a little too quick with the trigger. I think that they should actually take it slower, give it a few months, make sure they have a competitive bot before they bring it to the public. Very often with projects. People's first impressions matter a lot. They really do. If you come out of something that doesn't really provide that much more yield or that much more value to the system, even if one year down the line, you are going to fix things up, people might have just written you off by then. You know, I get that they're in a weird spot right now because they've actually had a launch of their token a month ago, right? So people holding it in their wallets, not really doing much because what is it to speculate about? So they can't really sit on their butts for the next six months and not release something. But that's kind of where the problem came in also. Like, should they have done their IPOs and their boot swap that early in the process? But that's my take on this whole matter. That was my, my brief take on, on the scam that occurred with, uh, with that fake listing and currently where White Whale sits. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, you could also subscribe. If you want to get into direct content with me or kind of communicate in my own little community, I do have a Discord. It's completely free. It's going to be in the description below. Other than that, thank you for listening and see you next time.